Thank you, Seth. Welcome everyone to Accreditation and Culture and Inseparable Pair. Uh, I'm Gretchen Black from CQL and I am joined today by Catherine Dunbar, our Vice President of Services and Systems Excellence. And we have our partners from Opportunities for Positive Growth with us as well. Catherine, anything to add? No, thank you. Looking forward to today. Okay. We always like to start by sharing CQL's mission and vision. Our vision here is a world of dignity, opportunity, and community for all people. And our mission, well, CQL is dedicated to the definition, measurement, and improvement of personal quality of life. We have the pleasure of working with more than 390 organizations uh, that have achieved CQL accreditation. You'll see on the screen, uh, we are in 23 states throughout the United States. We work with the Tennessee IDD system, as well as all organizations in North and South Dakota. And we have the pleasure of engaging with many partners in Canada and Ireland as well. You'll see here some of the value and benefits organizations gain from a partnership with CQL. Uh, first and foremost, it's the positive impact on people, and it's not just people receiving services, it's all stakeholders that are connected to the organization. Lots of resource sharing happens, um, we take a look at data, we um, encourage things like appreciative inquiry, and certainly organizational QA and QE structures are strengthened as well. So today we're going to talk about um, uh, the causes and effects of uh, poor culture and then how to make some positive changes within your organization. Um, we think it's important that we talk about kind of what causes uh, a not so healthy culture. Uh, one of those things is a lack of and or unclear communication. What we hear very often from our focus groups is uh, one of the concerns of a that they have with an organization. And the community, uh, others don't care about them. Um, there's a lack of support in the decision-making. Uh, I think one of the worst things that happens is that people make up their own assumptions. Um, and very often that assumption is not based in fact. Um, it also conveys a lack of transparency within an organization. And of course, there's probably um, an increase in turnover because people don't feel uh, like they are cared about. So uh, when we continue talking here about causes and effects of poor culture, code of silence is certainly um, one of those possible causes. And, and code of silence happens when people voluntarily or sometimes involuntarily withhold vital information. It creates that very toxic environment. We see the results uh, of that. We see things like fear in the workplace, bullying is happening and underreporting. Uh, continuing with the theme of turnover, uh, you're definitely going to see some issues with turnover when you have an environment where there is that code of silence. Often with that code of silence, um, just, you know, about the fear in the workplace is that people aren't comfortable in their own environment. They're afraid to say anything. So that's why the underreporting is such a um, concern. You know, people are afraid to report the things that are going on, not just the interpersonal relationships that they have with their uh, with, the, with their teammates, um, but also significant things like abuse, neglect, uh, mistreatment, and exploitation. So it's really important to uh, prevent that code of silence from happening. The other things that we see are um, if there's a lack of proper training, people just don't feel prepared to do their jobs. Uh, so they underperform or they do things um, 
and not the not the correct way uh, that is best for the person. Um, if staff don't know what their job entails or how to carry it out, people don't achieve their dreams. They don't achieve their goals. Uh, it could result in uh, licensing issues or uh, accidents because people don't know the proper way to, um, you know, perform their jobs safely. So it's really important that staff have uh, proper training and not only the classroom or online training, but the actual uh, hands-on training that staff should be doing too. Poor leadership is another issue that we see often, and that can occur at any level. And it can be with people that actually have a leadership title or perhaps they don't, but they're perceived or are leaders within the organization. Um, what happens when there's poor leadership? You have things like lack of big picture vision. Um, the future is cloudy to say the least and goals are not achieved. Organizations aren't taking advantage of opportunities. They're not seeking them out. They're not recognizing them when they're right in front of themselves. That certainly leads to things like frustration for team members. And it's also um, frustrating for the leaders within the organization. Organizations that have concerns with poor leadership, sometimes we things, see things like a punitive or retaliatory environment. There's lack of momentum in a positive direction. Leaders are defensive. What we want to see is an environment of listening to all stakeholders. Organizations that take action and they celebrate and they're using an appreciative inquiry approach to addressing issues and opportunities. And of course, continuing with the theme of turnover, um, poor leadership does lead to increase in turnover as well. This is, <laughs> I think, one of our favorite topics. Um, you know, how many times within your work have you experienced drama, you know, where people uh, may make a situation worse by perseverating on it or exaggerating it or, you know, just having a lot of drama in their lives? Uh, one of the things that can happen is that we, we can tend to give uh, people who create drama too much space. Uh, we, and it takes up a lot of time, you know, for the uh, manager and uh, the other people within the organization. Um, the drama that could happen within an organization uh, really can have a negative impact on people receiving services. You know, I've certainly seen that uh, happen myself and did a lot of learning with how to uh, quell that uh, tendency to be dramatic for some people. Um, and besides taking a lot of your time when you're dealing with all that drama, what you're not doing is spending time, you know, coaching and mentoring or, um, you know, being a, being a good leader in your own right. Um, and people get tired of it. You know, the people who, who aren't into the drama, um, they get tired of it and go seek employment or could go seek employment elsewhere. And unfortunately with drama, some people love it. And you're right, Kate, others uh, get very tired of it. And that's when we see that turnover. Mm -hmm. Other causes and effects of a poor culture. Um, what happens when an organization does not address performance issues? Lots of lots of concerns could arise. Sometimes that's seen as implied, implied favoritism. I think we've all been there. Um, it's frustrating when you think some something or someone is not being addressed um, the way it needs to be addressed. And along with that, um, people feel like then there's perhaps an unfair balance of expectations and assignments. And sometimes org at organizations, we certainly see those um, high achieving employees uh, ending up with more assignments or expectations than others. And, and that can be frustrating to your top performers, too. Overall, colleagues are frustrated, and I think perhaps one of the most detrimental outcomes of not addressing performance issues is we aren't giving people the opportunity to improve. And uh, most of us, I think, do want to put our best foot forward, and let's give our, our team members a chance to do that. Give your team the benefit of the doubt. Sit down and talk with people. Find out what's going on. 
ask them what they need from you to address those concerns or opportunities. Uh, here's our recurring theme again. You're going to see some turnover. Another um, cause of a poor culture is um, agent when they when agencies tend to silo, uh, and by that I mean um, when an agency, each like a department of an agency, just kind of works on its own by itself. Um, you know, finance doesn't talk to HR, HR doesn't talk to, you know, DSPs and um, all that can go on with people uh, just not communicating with each other. Uh, that definitely leads to uh, poor decision making because not everybody is involved in the decision making who probably needs to be. And there, are, there isn't enough information for people to make uh, an informed decision. It is certainly caused by a lack of teamwork where, you know, people will tend to say, oh, that's not my job. That's somebody else's job. Um, and they aren't attentive to uh, the inner workings of, a, of an organization. Um, the reduction of accountability is also another effect of, uh, well, and a cause too, of siloing. And, you know, you want to make sure that uh, people aren't you know, passing the buck from person to person in the organization, uh, that people are uh, take responsibility and accountability for their actions. Uh, organizations who are siloed uh, don't really have a big picture vision um, because it's not shared among uh, other members of the organization. So this, of course, will lead to a lack of innovation. Uh, you know, agencies aren't thinking differently, um, perhaps because they're not challenged because of the lack of teamwork, um, which, of course, leads to a lot of frustration um, for an organization uh, to kind of break down those silos. Uh, it really takes a lot of work and it takes a, a recognition uh, to make sure that those silos um, aren't happening and to break those down. Okay, everyone, let's shift now a little bit. It's time to start talking about the impact of creating a pos positive culture. Here's the good stuff that we want to get into. So, uh, of course, clear and consistent communication. That is something that you're going to see within a positive culture. Communication can make or break an organization. Transparency is happening. And those of you that are accredited by CQL or working on accreditation, you know how important transparency is. It's essential to us uh, determining accreditation and it's certainly essential for organizations to have that internally as well. Make sure people know what they can and should know as soon as you can share it. You're also going to see effective training in organizations with a positive culture and people willing and interested in supporting, especially newer team members or team members that are cross training, making sure they have the training and support they need to do their best work. People feel safe. Staff feel empowered. Goals are achieved. Here's one of our favorites, minimum drama, maximum celebration. And uh, we like to remind organizations of this a lot. Please stop and celebrate all of the things that are going well at your organization, not just the big things, the little things too. That creates not only, um, it creates a feeling within the organization. People feel uh, recognized and they want to continue doing those good things because you have pause to celebrate. Organizations with a positive culture, they have effective leaders, and those effective leaders are making sure that there is good teamwork happening. And like Kate was talking about uh, previously, good vision and innovation is happening. And guess what? You might see a reduction in turnover in that positive culture as well. Are you sensing a theme? <laughs> the turnover. Um one of the things that can help build autonomy and or several things actually that can help build autonomy and confidence uh, in within the organization is if you have a culture of support rather than punishment. Um, you know, I say this all the time that people are much, much more motivated by being told something positive 
and being motivated that way than, you know, being scolded for doing something wrong or for uh, making a mistake. And we'll get into that just in a few more slides. Um, you want to make sure that when you're asking for feedback and you're really, really listening to that feedback, you want to make sure that you respond. So if I come to you and I say, hey, I think it'd be a really good idea if we, you know, did this and such. And, you know, Gretchen tells me that, um, you know, Kate, I'll go check that out. Let me do a little research and I'll get back to you. It's important that Gretchen gets back to me and tells me why or why not that idea uh, can or cannot be implemented. You know, uh, the why is so important. So people understand, uh, number one, that they've been listened to. And number two, just for that very reason, just, you know, why will it or won't it work? Um, and then what role can I play? Uh, if something doesn't work, what role can I play to, to help make it work? Um, the other thing is when you bring a variety of stakeholders to the table uh, and make sure you're including people receiving services, DSPs, maybe family members, um, you know, other committees. Uh, but when you do this, make sure it's not the same person all the time. Um, you know, I think we tend to go to those people that we know are going to uh, or who already perform well in a certain role. And we want to grow uh, people within the organization. So giving them opportunities uh, to come to the table is just going to increase confidence and um, a person's uh, leadership skills. You know, Gretchen just talked about uh, celebration. And one of the important things about celebrating uh, your staff and each other is to ensure that the recognition that's given is meaningful. And that means really getting to know the people that work for you and the people you work with. Um, you know, if I know that Gretchen loves coffee. So if I want to recognize her in some way, maybe I will send her her favorite blends of coffee as, you know, a small thank you. Or maybe I know that she really, really hates public recognition. So I'm not going to post on our, you know, CQL team site that she did something fantastic. Um, or maybe she loves to be, you know, recognized. So I'm going to talk about it at, you know, our community practice calls and post it on Teams and, and really brag about her. Um, but I have to respond in a way that Gretchen, Gretchen appreciates and knows that she feels that she feels feels valued. Uh, this is also an opportunity uh, to share success stories. You know, like I said a minute ago, uh, people are much more motivated by uh, positive. Uh, recognition and um, success stories. So uh, this is a really good way to celebrate organization too. And of course, one of our favorite things here at CQL is appreciative inquiry. So you're looking for the, uh, the good things that are going on within the organization and you're trying to replicate those throughout the organization. Kate, one of the things I was thinking when you were talking a little bit earlier about supportive versus punitive, how many times have we said mistakes are our best teachers? And you know what? We can celebrate those mistakes uh, because I know I've learned better from the mistakes I've made than just about anything else. So when you create an environment where it's supportive of learning from those things that have happened, um, you're going to continue to cultivate that positive culture. Certainly. Okay. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about uh, how to create a positive culture. Workforce, um, we want everybody that we work with to have that work-life balance. And I think that that is more evidence within those organizations that have a positive culture. There's that decreased turnover we keep talking about. And uh, part of that is because of increased morale. People are excited and happy to be part of the organization. They feel valued and respected. And something really exciting that happens with organizations that have a positive culture, people that are new, um, people that are, you know, recently have recently been hired and are just joining the organization, um, they, they get a much warmer welcome from uh, current employees, from the training team, from people that are going to support them on their journey at your organization. Onboarding is simply more successful when you are meeting with and being trained by people that are excited to be there and they uh, feel lucky to be part of the organization. 
quality of services. Um, this is really, you know, bottom line, people receiving services, they're better supported and they're living the lives that they want. Really, what more can you say? Exactly, um, Gretchen, it's, it's all about the quality of service uh, and a positive work culture can certainly uh, make that happen. Um, we talked earlier about innovation and how a negative work culture can uh, really stifle innovation, but when people are supported to learn from their mistakes, uh, they're emboldened to try new things. Uh, they're confident that they're that they're not going to get in trouble uh, for making a mistake, and that um, you know those opportunities can be used uh, by others within the organization. You also have better problem solving. You know, instead of uh, people coming to you with only a problem, they'll start coming to you with a solution too. Um, and, you know, getting support to put that solution into action. Um, the sense of purpose certainly increases uh, with a positive work culture. Uh, your team is coming together and they're uh, living the mission of the organization and uh, trying to achieve the vision of the organization, which is a direct result um, of teamwork. Um, you know, we always uh, uh, encourage organizations uh, to that accreditation is just not one person's job. Quality is not one person's job. So it's important to have um, a team working on uh, the accreditation activities and the other quality initiatives the agency may have. Uh, the other good thing about a team is that no one's flying so solo. Everyone is being supported to give feedback and input and everyone is listened to. So that support of a team really helps people succeed in uh, having a job well done. Speaking of cultivating a positive environment, uh, we're really excited to have our partners from Opportunities um, OPG, if you will, OPG Inc., joining us today to talk about uh, some of the ways that they have uh, built a positive culture. And they're going to share some insights as well. Um, you'll hear them talk a little bit more about how they're engaging with uh, the people that are part of their world, communication and training that's happening, and, and what people think about the efforts that they have made to uh, cultivate that positive culture at their organization. So opportunities for positive growth, take it away. Hello, thank you, Gretchen and Kate. This is Andrea Schwartz. I'm the CEO at Opportunities for Positive Growth. And we're so thankful to be here with all of you that are out across the world doing wonderful things. And it's a great opportunity to share a little bit of what's worked well for us. And we're really hopeful that if, if nothing else, um, everybody on here takes at least one thing to try um, to bring into your organization and um, see how it works. Uh, that's that's part of the culture that we've created is give it a try. <laughs> so um, I do wanna go ahead and, and make a request of everyone in the audience. And that is later on in our presentation, we'll be asking or we'll be talking about and giving some examples of ways that we show gratitude and celebrate and support our employees. Um, and how that affects uh, positive supports for the people that we provide supports to. But we want to, we saw this as an opportunity to learn from you too, knowing that we've done what we've done um, and we'll share some of those ideas, but we know a lot of you are out there doing wonderful things too. And we just thought this would be a great opportunity for collaboration. So um, as we're going over these first few slides, if you don't mind going into the Q&A box and giving us a couple of examples of, of things you're doing today or have done recently to show gratitude and to celebrate within your organization. So one thing that we thought was really important to start with, and I, and I think it's interesting that in CQL slides as they introduced the webinar today, they started where we like to start, and that is with mission, vision, and values. Um, regardless of your organization's size, making sure that you have a mission that is clearly stated and resonates with 
the nature of your organization is incredibly important. We know and we deal with every day the really big challenges that go along with providing very person-centered centered supports. Um, and I do think that it can be very easy to um, not see spending time, spending a day, um, spending time asking people um, for input regarding your mission, vision, values. I can see how that may not seem like a really important exercise because you have so many other urgent things to address. And I'm not saying don't address the urgent items. However, do make it a priority to reflect on if you already have a mission, vision, values statements, um, reflect on whether or not those still fit who you are and where you want to go next um, and take some time and, and write it, get input. Um, we updated our mission and values and vision back in 2017. We already had those, but we felt like we had grown past what the previous statements had defined. And in 2017, we came up with the mission statement that you see on your screen now. And our mission currently is inspiring people in the pursuit of a rewarding life. Uh, we chose every one of those words very um, specifically. And that mission statement has stuck with us. I, I will give you some transparency. Our vision statement, we just updated this year. So our mission statement and our value statements have held from what we came up with in 2017. But we did go back and update our vision statement that Lucy will share with us in a minute. Um, but I wanted to also just address the fact that you can't just stop there. <laughs> you can't stop with your mission, vision, and values. You've got to make sure that you pull that all the way through. Your policies, do your policies reflect that same attitude and belief that exists within your mission, vision, and values? Do your day-to-day -day decisions um, support that mission, vision, values? What do you call your documents? That sounds silly. What are you, how are you naming your meetings? <laughs> what, how, how are you um, creating welcoming spaces where you are? How are you partnering with other organizations, with family members, with people supported? Are all of those things consistent then with that touchstone of your mission, vision, and values? Um, I will tell you that once you get it right, you'll know. Um, and it is something that does need to be communicated over and over and over again. There, I, I do not believe it's possible for us to overstate or repeat too many times our mission, vision, and values. Um, making sure that our teams understand what they are so that they can then be living demonstrations of those is incredibly powerful. I also want to mention that um, part of how we know whether or not we're aligning our day-to-day -day work with our mission, vision, and values is getting feedback. Um, they talked about getting feedback and um, you know, obviously when we go through an accreditation cycle, we get tons of feedback both all, from all the stakeholders, right? From people supported most importantly, from our employees, from our community partners, from family members, from, from all the people. And we don't stop there. We don't, we also, most of us will get feedback from state agencies. You know, we're all governed by state agencies. So uh, we get feedback from them, but we don't stop there either. We make sure that we conduct an annual um, employee engagement survey that helps guide us um, as to whether or not we are living up the promises of our mission, vision, values. We don't stop there either. We we actually do check-ins with our new hires um, three times within their first three months outside of their, their supervisor's type of day-to-day um, -day ongoing support. And I, I wanted to share a comment that just came in this week from an employee that's been with us for three months. Um, and this is part of how we check ourselves and whether or not we're actually doing, if we're walking the talk, so to speak. So this comment came in from um, an employment specialist that works for us. And she said, and I quote, I appreciate that the actual company culture matches the stated company values. I've never seen that in any company I've worked for in the past. I'm proud to tell people where I work. We don't get comments like that on every single <laughs> survey that we do, but we get them a lot. Um, and it helps reinforce that what we're doing is headed in the right direction. Um, 
So I just want to encourage you take the time to do those things. So our mission statement, like I said, is um, inspiring people in the pursuit of a rewarding life. Next, I'll share our values. Our, we have four core values at OPG, and those are people, innovation, quality, and financial stability. We list those as words. Uh, we typically describe the values around these, but, but these are um, central to our decision making. And when we say we value people, we mean that we value all people. That doesn't just include the people supported, although, of course, they are the reason behind our, our organization existing. Um, but it means that we value our employees, too. And it means that we value the people that we interact with within our um, community partners, with our agencies that, that govern part of our services. Um, but we value people. And that also means when when you go back to some of the statements they talked about having getting out of a blame type of a culture, you want to embrace people when they've when they're in um, facing a, a challenge or a problem. And we do that by being together in the problem, right? So we don't look for blame. We look for what do we do next and let's do it together. We can figure this out. We we have um, made a lot of progress over the last several years on um, making that a very collaborative experience when something goes awry, because inevitably it will, especially in human services. Um, people's desires change, our communities change, um, access to resources change, and you make a lot more progress um, by collaborating with other people. Our next value is quality. Obviously, we're governed by lots of different entities, but we also have some of our own internal definitions of quality. We think it's important for folks to know that us making sure that we get our documents in on time matters that the quality of interactions um, with people matters, um, that being prompt to respond to those governing agencies matters, <laughs> uh, that we're not trying to, to cut any corners on how we implement quality within our, pra our practices. Innovation is the next one I'll talk about. That one um, is one of my favorites that makes us a little messy. And what I mean by that is uh, we say yes a lot. When people have ideas, we say yes and let's go. Um, and we don't wait until it's perfect before we try it, um, which can be a very um, engaging experience for people. If they have an idea, we really try to find a way to say yes. We've tried to table our desire for perfectionism uh, and just say, let's let's just keep making progress. Let, let's take one step at a time and, and let's try something new. And you know what, if it, it doesn't work, we just move on and we try something else new next. Um, innovation is fundamentally involved in our day-to-day -day operations. And then this last value is the one that I think people are most surprised by maybe within our value statement, and that is financial stability. The reason we have that there is because while we value people, quality, and innovation, we have to do that in a financially responsible way in order for us to be a reliable provider of wonderful supports for individuals, not just in the next couple of months or the next couple of years, but 10 years from now, 20 years from now. That financial stability also allows us to be a reliable employer. Uh, we have employees that have been with us over 20 years, which is really a, amazing. Actually, just this month, we, uh, we're we recognizing our employee milestones and our 10-year milestone awards. We had 11 employees we were recognizing. Seven of those were direct support professionals that were achieving their 10 years with us. We thought that was noteworthy um, in, a, in an industry um, plagued by and, and over very famous for uh, the challenges that that we we also face with DSP recruitment and turnover. Um, but we have seven DSPs that have been with us that celebrated their 10 year this year. We've got some that have been with us longer. Um, one's actually at 19 years now, which is just absolutely amazing. Um, so I just want to mention those. Now, Lucy's going to step us through our vision statement. And this one is hot off the presses within 2023. And she'll explain a little bit more about how we got there. All right, thank you. And as Andrea mentioned, 
um, we recently updated our vision statement. And as it relates to this topic of this web webinar, um, the accreditation and cultural culture as an inseparable pair, ultimately preparing for our accreditation a year in advance led us to the realization that we needed to update our vision. We heard feedback from people supported, family members, and community partners. We knew that we need to reach further and set a vision that everyone could grasp, share, and ultimately personalize for themselves. The vision of opportunities for positive growth is people connect, people dream, people thrive. We know each person defines this for themselves and with whom, where, and how someone wants to connect. From a date at a coffee shop to a concert with friends, that vision of connection is personalized. People dream. All of us have the right to dream and set a goal or vision for ourselves. The same goes for an organization. Dreaming helps paint a picture of how you want your life to be, but also how you want your organization to be and build supports towards that vision. We added dreaming into our organizational vision because it ultimately solidifies a forward thinking culture. And people thrive. Thriving by definitions means growing, prospering, flourishing. You will hear this in Opportunities for Positive Growth, but you'll hear it you, as you heard in our organizational values that there's no delineation between people supported and employees. Our vision is that everyone thrives. Thriving, um, as Kate and Gretchen mentioned, thriving does not mean you'll always go down a clear barrier-free path, but recognize we go through challenges and mistakes and those lessons learned. We prosper through experiences that we've learned from, we've grown from, um, and that we've taken those lessons forward. And we have an organizational culture that recognizes that all of those opportunities, the good, the bad, the messy, allow us to thrive and grow. And we wanted a vision that reflected that organizational mentality that we will answer yes, we will be innovative, but we wanna make sure we hear from all of the people we support and our partners as well. Next, Jessica and Michelle are gonna talk about how we celebrate and how we um, truly implement our organizational culture. Hi everyone, um, I'm Jessica Graff. I'm here with Michelle Flynn Denning. Um, I am the director for our self-directed services department here at OPG. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about dreams and kind of what that looks like, what that means. Um, I know when I started at OPG seven years ago, I was asked in orientation what my dream was. And honestly, I didn't have a real answer at that time. Um, it's not something I'd ever been asked at. Um, at a job before. So um, at every meeting at OPG, we start by asking people what their dreams are. Um, in a world where service providers, um, you know, we're working through staffing crisis, um, supporting people with declining health, challenging behavioral concerns. And I'm sure everyone is familiar with what feels like a roadblock at every turn. Um, talking about dreams might seem unrealistic, but we still ask. Um, we feel like it's something that we have to ask. Um, I found that people receiving services don't always know that they are even allowed to have dreams, let alone encouraged to have dreams. They're often caught in a world of schedules dictated by other people, um, goals that their case managers or parents write for them, or just resistance from their support teams at the mention of a dream. When you tell someone all the barriers to their dreams, eventually they're going to stop dreaming. We have to focus on the possibilities and not the barriers. So when I started at OPG, I was encouraged to finish my degree. Uh, this was a dream with a lot of barriers. I, you know, school is expensive. I worked full time. I have kids with busy schedules and all of these barriers could have stopped me. But fortunately, I had someone to push me to pursue my dream, um, more like forced me to pursue my dream. <laughs> uh, Michelle was a you know, a huge contributor to me finishing my degree. Uh, every time I saw her or saw Lucy or Andrea, they were always asking when I was going back to school. So 
eventually they bullied me into it and I <laughs> finished my degree. Um, but with that encouragement, you know, I found ways around the barriers and I made it happen. And I found a ton of support from others and found a new drive to help others achieve their dreams. So when we ask about dreams for employees and the people we support, um, you know, we're encouraging employees to pursue their dreams, and that often gives them the fuel that they need to encourage others to pursue their dreams. So if we're only focused on the day-to-day -day challenges, we're going to lose sight of all the other possibilities that are out there for people. Um, anyone who knows Lucy knows that she says dreams are contagious, um, and you're going to hear that from a lot of people at OPG as well, and it's because it's true. And um, when we're excited about things, others are going to get excited about them as well. So some different ways that, you know, dreams have impacted um, OPG and the culture here. We talk a lot about professional development um, that moves past department limitations. So we're not going to discourage someone from pursuing their dream or continuing their education or looking for other opportunities just to keep them within our department. We have a lot of people within our department who've gone on to be behavior specialists, employment service um, providers, um, have gone on to work at other providers outside of OPG, and it's all stuff that we want to continue to encourage. Uh, we've had employees who have pursued higher education, um, who have advanced in different leadership roles within the company because of the encouraging culture. Um, we've even seen people, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, new positions within the company be created to meet a person's skill set. So we may have seen, you know, an opportunity with a person, um, something that they were really talented at that met a need that maybe we didn't either know we had or, um, you know, something new that they could add to the company. Um, and then just on when we talk about, you know, the people that we support, we've had DSPs um, as well as a lot of other people within the company help people with their dreams of reconnecting with family members. Um, we've had people who have gone to a concert for the first time, someone who just got a cat that they wanted a cat forever. And it's been a huge dream of theirs. Um, we've also had someone who had a dream of having less staff in their house and they wanted more alone time to spend with their cat. Um, so we worked really hard to make that happen. Um, so I've got a quote here from a former employee. She uh, started as a DSP with us and then moved into a supervisor position. And um, this last year, she decided to pursue a different career path, um, you know, within waiver services. And we were all really excited for her. Uh, she was amazing when she was here with us. Um, but we knew that she was looking for something different and something that a little different from working in the home providing direct support. And um, so she had sent me this message when we were congratulating her. Um, she said, I appreciate you all so much, the genuine support and wanting others to succeed, even if the place that it needs to happen is elsewhere. It's honestly so rare. So we want, like I said, everyone to pursue their goals, their dreams. And if it's not with us, we wanna encourage them to have that elsewhere. Um, that's part of having the rewarding life um, that is our mission. Thank you, Jessica. This is Michelle Clendenning. I'm the executive director of our self-directed services. Um, so I know it was mentioned uh, a couple times earlier about retention and um, kind of being grateful and that leading to retention. Uh, I just kind of wanted to give a small example. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I have always felt um, like I was appreciated and valued here, um, which has led me to be here 18 years. Uh, I started as a DSP and I felt valued then and continued to feel that throughout. Um, I can't imagine going somewhere else because I don't know that I would find that that culture anywhere else. Um, Jessica is another great example. She's been here seven years. Um, and then another example, I, Lindsay Miller, she's our quality assurance specialist for our department and she's been with us for 14 years. And I know we've had many conversations that she is just always 
felt valued and knows this is where she should be. Um, anyways, I just had to add that because I heard retention a couple times before in the previous slides. So I just kind of wanted to give a little bit and, and there's, there are a lot more that have like Andrea pointed out, we have seven DSPs that celebrated 10 years. That's really awesome. And we do have some that have been with us even longer. So, um, and I do think that's based on the culture that we have created with the dreams um, and gratitude. As Jessica mentioned, uh, we do begin every meeting with dreams, but we also <laughs> ask um, people to share what they're grateful for. Um, and during those meetings, it could be something work-related, personal-related, whatever it might be, but we just want to take some time and recognize that there are things for us to be grateful for. And this helps to promote positive emotions, improve our health, deal with hardships and build strong relationships. In order to um, do this at OPG, we've created opportunities for positive growth in showing <laughs> gratitude and developing strong relationships through a couple different ways. Um, so first of all, we listened and I know this was talked about earlier in some slides too, we listened to the employees and people supported that they wanted something fun. Everyone was craving to have fun without a training, a webinar, or any kind of meeting tied to it. They wanted just a day of fun. So we listened and created that for them. Um, our first year was a successful visit to the zoo and we had activities going on. We saw the dolphin show. We got to tour the zoo. We did a little scavenger hunt. Um, we had a spin the wheel to get a gift card. Lots of fun, food fun. Um, people traveled from all regions to celebrate and just kind of enjoy a day at the zoo. Uh, people supported came. It was a great day. Um, we got feedback that they wanted more of that. So then this year we kept with it and we had a day of fun at a baseball game. It was a hot day, but we all enjoyed the fun and fellowship. I mean, who doesn't love a little baseball and social time? It was great. Um, again, people we supported got together and they were able to socialize and we got to see people from all different regions. Um, I think that was important too, that, you know, it, it, we were all there together from, you know, we have several different regions across Indiana and we were able to kind of come together for a couple hours one day and just enjoy each other's company. Um, another thing is during our CQL accreditation, we presented uh, the opportunity for anyone to come join us on our stakeholder day, which we called the day of magic. By the way, I know I said accreditation incorrectly. I really have a hard time saying accreditation. <laughs> accreditation, sorry. Um, this day allowed for many of us to gather together, have voices heard while building relationships and enjoying each other's company. We had somewhat of a magical theme. So it was kind of a Harry Potter, Disney kind of magical. It was fun. Um, we had... Um, charcuterie boards and we had fondue and just fun activities to do throughout the day um, that we provided a food truck and we had someone that we support DJ and um, I know I got caught one time when there was like some talking going out on uh, I was singing a song I just <laughs> had to sing it there was a couple of us out there just jamming out and it was so much fun um and it, it was a big hit. Again, people traveled from all the regions to eat, dance, celebrate, and have fun. But they also, it provided them an opportunity to be heard, their voice to be heard about the future of OPG. And we were super grateful that they could come and help us and with that vision of what OPG is going to look like in the future. Um, but for those that can't travel, we understand that. Um, we bring the festivities to them. So we have uh, Tailgate Tuesdays and a fall festival. Tailgate Tuesdays began last year and they were such a hit, hit that this year we decided to add a little more to it. So we added the fall festival and we kind of combined that with our DSP Appreciation, Appreciation Week. 
Um, we love DSP Appreciation Week. We always do something special, but we thought let's just jazz it up and have more. It, we wanted our whole company to be able to come together and recognize that week. Um, so we gathered together at different locations. Uh, we enjoyed Cornhole, which that was a little tournament. Uh, I won't say who won, but I think it might have been myself and <laughs> another person. <laughs> no, but it was a fun time and we were able to raise and we had fun while also raising money for um, a non-for-profit organization, Help Over Hurdles, which I don't know if any of you've heard of that, but that is an organization that helps raise money for DSPs during hard times. They help cover financial costs. Um, great organization. We could give you further information if you would like, just um, you can, I, I don't know if we can put it in the chat or the question and answer. I'm new to this. So, but we can get you that information about help over hurdles in case you want to learn more about it. Um, but we did a formal tournament for that. We painted rocks, had a live concert. Um, we had people supported singing. We had, um, we, I, some people even brought some of their um, children to the day. It was pretty open and it was fun. It was just a great way to get together make crafts. Uh, we even got to do an old fashioned cake walk. I don't know if you guys know about this. I knew about this. I didn't realize people didn't know what a cake walk was. So we exposed people and educated people on what a cake walk was and they had so much fun with the cake walk. Uh, so the excitement conversations that hap happened during these events, priceless. I and I can't wait for next year and see what else we can do. Um, I'm hoping maybe in the future, a dump tank, I don't know, or a pie in the face. I don't know, something. We'll see. Um, but it was so much fun. But while we love coming together, we also, there's so many ways that we want to show appreciation um, for the work that everybody does, because we know it can be tough and challenging at times, but we do recognize people. Um, but we want to want to make sure that we show appreciation because it can make someone's day it might even change their life um we continually to strive to show appreciation um we do this by celebrating also we talk, i heard some we talked about celebrating accomplishments uh, at OPG we love to celebrate accomplishments of employees and people we support uh, I know when Jessica was talking about dreams, those dreams, we don't just let those dreams happen. We also celebrate them. We may have a party or we may just send a card or it may just be like a high five. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. But we do recognize it and we um, we show how proud we are of them for accomplishing it. Uh, Jessica, her picture's up here. She's graduated. We were super proud of her. Um, and I that goes a long way. And I think people feel um, like we're paying attention and we see them and we're proud of them. So no matter how big or small, we want all people want people to know that we are proud of them and appreciate them. Recognition helps employees see that we value their contributions to our overall success. Each year we have awards in the in a couple different categories, value of OPG, contributing to a life of a person, and advancing inclusion. With this, we receive so many nominations, and these nominations don't come from just within inside our organization. We received some from case managers and family members, which says a lot about the work that those people are doing. Um, so we recognize all the nominees and then the winners receive a crystal award to display for the amazing work they do. Uh, we also have a special award. It's the Pursuit Award that uh, Gail Call, our founder, uh, started. And this highlights an employee or employees who have who further the OPG mission through their professional growth, dedication to people supported, and the impact on the company. Um, there's only, I think, We've done this four years, uh, and actually, Jessica, I'm going to point you out again. She was, uh, she was our pursuit winner uh, this year. So she has done a fabulous job of encompassing all that OPG is. So um, all of those awards are special, and that's a way for us to show we appreciate and value each employee. Um, and as stated before, also, you know, it's not always. 
Um, it's not always about an award or a big party or big recognition. Sometimes uh, just we do recognize years of service and we send a card out and that's that goes a long way as well. Um, we recognize employees' birthdays. We send a card out and we have an Amazon gift card with that. Uh, I've heard so many thank yous for those two simple things, just receiving a card to recognize that special moment. Um, it's, I just received one a couple weeks ago from someone that just said, hey, thank you so much for this birthday card. Um, along with that, we do also do the little things. Send a text, make a phone call to say, hey, I saw what you did. I recognize it. Great job. We appreciate you so much. Uh, or even a handwritten note. I know that's, you know, not, people don't do that a lot, but it's really nice to get something in the mail that's handwritten that just simply says, thank you. You're doing a great job. We appreciate you. Um, we also do uh, shout outs on social media and we show our gratitude and highlight employees that are doing a special job. So um, saying thank you goes a long way and people appreciate knowing that what they did mattered and that you value them. Expressing gratitude will set the tone for your team's interactions and productivity. If you lead with gratitude, your team will have a similar mindset that will create a positive culture of appreciation. I know some of you have already put in your question and answers like things, ways you've showed, you show appreciation and gratitude. Um, I'd love to hear more ideas. I've read through the ones that are there. Please put them in there. And there's whether it's big or small, whatever it might be, I would love to hear what you have done at your organization. Thank you so much to each of you. Uh, we really appreciate your wonderful ideas and I'm so, so glad that uh, you were able to join us today and share with everyone uh, the great things that you're doing. Um, we encourage you to sign up for CQL emails um, where you can get a lot of our materials straight to your inbox um, and you can sign up for the different types of information that you want so you're not hit with absolutely everything that we do. Uh, if you have any, um, if you'd like any more information about CQL, please feel free to go to any of our social media pages, um, our website, our e-community on Facebook, uh, just tag us in different things. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Yes, and uh, we again, we really appreciate everyone joining us for today. Uh, we did get a little tight on time, so we didn't have uh, time to devote to the Q&A. Um, but again, we, we really do appreciate you joining us, and especially a shout out to everyone from OPG for, for sharing so much information and kind of practical ideas and, and all of that. So, so I know um, that provided a lot of value to our attendees. So um, just kind of a last reminder, we do send out a link to all registrants with um, where you can access the webinar recording as well as a PDF version of the PowerPoint slides and that'll be coming to you in about one to two weeks and we'll also include uh, the various information we shared through the, the chat window so you'll be able to access it there. So again, um, Catherine, Gretchen, everyone from OPG uh, and all of our attendees, thank you. Uh, it was a great session and we'll see you for our, our last and final accreditation webinar series session in November and that is uh, the accreditation FAQ where we're going to answer all sorts of questions about um, about accreditation and we'll we'll include a registration link to that in the email follow that you'll receive in one to two weeks. So thank you everyone and hope you thank have you. a wonderful rest of the day and, and rest of your week. Thank you. Thanks everyone.